Hi everyone. Today in this video, let us start a new session, Learn with Fun. Let us discuss the pharmacology concepts in easy and interesting way. And this is part two of video series, Learn with Fun. In our previous video, we have discussed few of the important points about the beta blockers and potassium channel blockers in an interesting way by solving few of the puzzles. And today in this video, let us discuss more pharmacology concepts in an easy way by analyzing the concept to remember it for a longer time. If you found this video useful, please click the like button to support our work and share this video with your friends to reach more number of people. Post your comments, doubts, suggestions or any ideas in the comment section so that we can discuss in more detailed way. So now let us start our pharmacology session, learn with fun. The first one, find the drug name with the following clues. So these are the blocks given to fill the drug name. And what are the clues are? The first one, it ends with the suffix azole. And second clue, it acts on dopamine receptors. So these are the two clues. By using these two, you have to identify the drug name. You can have a time for 5 seconds, you can think about the right answer, otherwise you can pause the video and you can spot the right answer. Now let us go with the solution for this puzzle. The first clue, it ends with the suffix azole. So you can simply fill the suffix azole in the blocks. So this is a drug which is having the suffix azole. When we see the simple word azole, we can easily remember azole antifungals. So you may think that the drug name belongs to the azole antifungals. But in the pharmacology, we can come across with different types of drugs which are still having the same suffix azole. So what are the drugs which are having the suffix azole? If we carefully observe and list out the drugs, the first one is a category of drugs which are called as azole antifungals. Let us take one example, fluconazole is one of the azole antifungal which is having the suffix azole. Commonly these drugs are called as azoles. But still we have other drugs which are having the suffix azole. If we carefully recollect, we can identify one of the drug, omeprazole. Omeprazole is a proton pump inhibitor which is having the similar suffix azole. Similarly we can identify another drug eripiprazole where we can find again the suffix azole. Finally we can find metronidazole, tinidazole, these are the anti-amoebic drugs with similar suffix azole. So within these blocks we can fill any of the drug with following categories. It may be azole antifungal, it may be a proton pump inhibitor or it may be eripiprazole or it may be anti-amoebic agent. Then what is the right answer for this puzzle? In order to identify the right answer, we have to go for the next clue. It acts on dopamine receptors. But before going to that, let us see what is the difference between these drugs and their suffixes. If we see the drugs which are having the azole suffix, we have so many types of drugs like clotrimazole, ketoconazole, iconazole, fluconazole, itraconazole. All these are classified as azole antifungals. These azole antifungals are having the primary suffix azole and they are commonly known as azole antifungals. On the other hand, we can observe another suffix prazole. The drugs ending with the suffix prazole includes omeprazole, pantaprazole, rabeprazole, lansaprazole, esomeprazole, which is the S isomer of omeprazole. All these are the proton pump inhibitors which are having the suffix prazole. But within the suffix, we can identify a part of the suffix azole. So even they are having the similar suffix like azole antifungals, but proton pump inhibitors can be identified by observing the proper suffix. The suffix of proton pump inhibitors is prazole. In this way, we can differentiate the azole antifungals with proton pump inhibitors. Third type of suffix is the nidazole. We have the drugs like metronidazole and tinidazole. Even they are looking like azole antifungals, but they are having different suffix, nidazole. The part of the suffix is azole, but they are not the antifungals. These two drugs are anti-protozole agents, and they are used in various types of 
bacterial and protozoal infections. Similarly, we have another drug, eripiprazole. Now, if you carefully observe, eripiprazole is having the suffix prazole. Since it is having the prazole as suffix, we can think that it is a PPI, proton pump inhibitor. But eripiprazole is not a PPI. Even it is having the suffix prazole, it is not acting like proton pump inhibitors. Instead, it is a antipsychotic. So, this drug may be confused with proton pump inhibitors, but it is an antipsychotic. In this way, we can identify the drugs with their unique suffix. Azole antifungals are having the simple suffix azole. Proton pump inhibitors are having the unique suffix prazole. And antiprotozoals are having the unique suffix nidazole. Eripiprazole is an exception which is having prazole as the suffix, but it is an antipsychotic. Now, with this information, let us solve the puzzle. If we go back, the second clue, it acts on dopamine receptors. So, which drug acts on dopamine receptors? If we list out the drugs, fluconazole, omeprazole, metronidazole, and eripiprazole. Among these, which acts on dopamine receptors? Fluconazole is an antifungal agent which inhibits lanosterol 14 alpha demethylase enzyme. By inhibiting this enzyme, azole antifungals inhibit the synthesis of ergosterol in the fungal cell membrane. So, azole antifungals are acting on the enzyme, they are not acting on the dopamine receptor. So, this is not the right option. Then, what is the action of omeprazole and PPIs? PPIs are mainly blocking the proton pump H plus K plus ATPase pump which reduces the secretion of gastric acid. So again, they are not acting on the dopamine. So omeprazole is not the right answer. Then metronidazole and tinidazole can produce free radical damage on the DNA of the parasite. Thereby, they can act as antiprotozoal agents. So again, it is not acting on the dopamine receptor. So it is not the right option. And finally, eripiprazole is the antipsychotic and this drug is classified as atypical antipsychotic. It acts as dopamine receptor partial agonist. That means eripiprazole can act as agonist as well as antagonist. It acts as antagonist to reduce the psychotic symptoms, but it acts as agonist to improve the motor symptoms. In this way, eripiprazole is an atypical antipsychotic that acts as dopamine receptor partial agonist. So, eripiprazole is the right answer for this puzzle. Let us go with the next one. Identify the drug category by finding its suffix in the below phrase. This is a long phrase mixed with different types of suffixes. And from this, we have to identify one of the drug suffix which matches to the following clues. The first clue is that it reduces blood pressure. Second one, it is a vasodilator. And third one, it blocks the receptor. By using these three clues, we have to identify a suitable drug suffix. Again, these types of puzzles increase our concept by analyzing the drugs and their suffixes. If you normally read the pharmacology, you have to remember so many types of concepts, which is not an easy task. But if you compare the different suffixes, their categories, and what are their pharmacological actions, by comparing, you can remember them in more easy way as well as for longer time. So now you have the time again for 5 seconds. You can spot the right answer. Otherwise, you can pause the video and think about this question. Then you can find the drug suffix which matches to the given clues. Now let's go with the solution for this puzzle. First of all, let us identify the different types of drug suffixes that are incorporated within this phrase. If we carefully observe, we can identify a drug suffix here. This is Pril. Prills are the AC inhibitors. We can also see another suffix osin. They are the alpha blockers. Volol, they are the beta blockers. And palm, they are the benzodiazepines. So we can identify the four types of drug suffixes within this phrase. Then what is the right answer for this puzzle? If we go with the first clue, it reduces blood pressure. So among these four categories of drugs, which reduces the blood pressure? So if we list out these, First one is Pril. Prills are the AC inhibitors. Second one, Osin. Osin are the alpha 1 blockers. Third one, Olol. Olol indicates they are beta blockers. And last one, Palm. 
which indicates they are benzodiazepines. The first one, pril or ACE inhibitors can reduce the blood pressure. They can be used as antihypertensives and alpha 1 blockers can produce direct vasodilation. Therefore, they can also be used as antihypertensives. We know that beta blockers are well-known antihypertensives, so they also reduce blood pressure. Finally, benzodiazepines, they are centrally acting to produce sedation and anxiolytic effect. Here the suffix palm indicates they are positive allosteric modulators. They are the modulators for GABA receptors. Thereby they can produce sedation, reducing anxiety and increasing the sleep. That's why they are used as sedatives, anxiolytics and hypnotics. But they are not directly reducing the blood pressure, so this is not the right option. So from the four suffixes, we can delete the suffix palm. Now in order to identify the right answer, let us go for the next clue. Now let us go to the second clue. It is a vasodilator. So among these three drug categories, which acts as vasodilator? If again we see the list, prills or AC inhibitors are the vasodilators. They reduce the sense of angiotensin 2, thereby they can prevent the vasoconstriction. Similarly, alpha 1 blockers are the direct vasodilators. They inhibit the vasoconstriction by adrenergic system. Then what about the beta blockers? The beta blockers which are hang the suffix olol, they can reduce the blood pressure but they are not the vasodilators. They can act on the heart thereby they can reduce both rate as well as force of contraction which reduce the cardiac output along with decreasing the afterload and preload. When this afterload and preload are reduced, it reduces the blood pressure. So beta blockers can reduce the blood pressure but they are not the vasodilators. So volol is not the right answer. Then we have two options, pril and osin, which is the right option here. In order to see that, let us go for the third clue. Third clue is that it blocks the receptor. Now again, if we see the list, prils are the AC inhibitors. They are inhibiting one of the enzyme, angiotensin converting enzyme. So they inhibit the sense of angiotensin 2, thereby they can produce vasodilation. So pril is not the right option here. Finally, the drugs ending with the suffix osin, they are alpha-1 blockers. These drugs can block the alpha-1 adrenergic receptors that are located directly on the blood vessels. That's why alpha-1 blockers are called as direct vasodilators. So here the right answer is osin. If we summarize, three types of drugs can reduce the blood pressure. One is pril, second one is osin, third one is olol. Still, we have so many other drugs which can reduce the blood pressure. But in relation to the given question, these three drug categories can reduce the blood pressure. The drugs ending with the suffix pril include captopril, lysinopril, enalapril, ramipril, fusinopril, and so many other drugs. All these are classified as AC inhibitors. And among these, the first two drugs, captopril and lysinopril, are the active drugs. That means these two drugs can directly block the AC enzyme and they don't need any bioactivation within the liver. Quite oppositely, drugs like enalapril, ramipril, fosinopril and other AC inhibitors are acting like prodrugs. They require the bioactivation and once they are metabolized, they can be converted into active metabolites. Then they can inhibit the enzyme AC angiotensin converting enzyme. Thereby, they can inhibit the conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Since angiotensin 2 is a potent vasoconstrictor, when the synthesis of angiotensin 2 is inhibited, vasoconstriction can be inhibited that reduces the blood pressure. Similarly, drugs ending with the suffix osin include prazosin, doxazosin, terazosin, alfijosin, tamsulosin, and silodosin. All these are having the suffix osin and they are classified as alpha-1 blockers. The first three drugs, prazosin, doxazosin and terazosin can be used as antihypertensive agents and they are particularly indicated in the treatment of severe hypertension. Since these drugs are acting like direct vasodilators, they can produce postural hypotension and reflux tachycardia as two important side effects. That's why these drugs can produce a hypotensive response within first week of the treatment which is commonly known as first dose effect. The last three drugs, alfijosin, tamsulosin and silodosin, 
They can be indicated for the treatment of BPH, benign prostatic hyperplasia. These drugs can produce a relaxation of the bladder neck and urethra, thereby they can increase the urinary flow. That's why they are used in the treatment of BPH. Alfijosin can be used both for BPH as well as antihypertensive. Finally, the drugs ending with the volol are called as beta blockers. Both selective beta blockers like etanolol, metoprolol as well as non-selective beta blockers like propranolol, timolol, all these are having the same suffix olol which indicates they are beta blockers. But few of the beta blockers like labetalol is having the suffix alol and carbidolol as ilol, sotalol is alol. These three drugs are not the pure beta blockers. They are having additional class of activity, which we have discussed in the part 1 of this video. Lambetlol and carvedilol are classified as both alpha and beta blockers. Sotalol is a potassium channel blocker with beta blocker activity, so these three drugs are not the pure beta blockers. Except these three drugs, all the pure beta blockers, whether they are selective or non-selective, they are having the common suffix olol. But beta blockers are not the vasodilators. They can reduce the blood pressure by their inhibitory action on the heart. In this way, we can learn the pharmacology by interlinking the concepts, which brings more analysis on the content as well as gives more clarity. So that's all about this session. Pharmacology concepts learn with fun. In our next video, we will come with another interesting topic and we will elaborate the concepts that are more interesting and easy to learn. If you really like this video, please click the like button and share this video with your friends to support our work. As I have stated earlier, your comments are highly welcome and post your comments or any doubts in the comment section. So that's all about today. Thanks for watching this video.